Paper House followers. Today we are making teardrop earrings using memory wire. Um, we are going to be using that extra heavy duty diameter. Um, this is great if you have larger stones you're wanting to put on your bracelet. Um, also, I like to do these when I'm creating my frames. I like the extra heavy um, for my earring frames. Um, that's just a personal preference. Now, since we are using memory wire, I have my memory wire shears. You guys, it is so important to make sure you are using memory wire shears. This is very, very dense wire. If I was to use my normal flush cutters on these, it would destroy my nice uh, cutter here. So make sure you have your memory wire shears. And then I also like to use, especially on this extra heavy, the memory wire pliers, um, just because it's, again, designed for the memory wire. Um, and most of the time you want to make sure your wire on these heavy ones are all the way at the bottom so you're not destroying your um, pliers. Um, I also have some amethyst chips. That's what we're going to be adding into our teardrops today. And we're also going to make a matching necklace. So I'm going to be working with the rose gold today. So I got some rose gold chain. Um, and we're going to make a straight bar across on our necklace. And it'll be a cute little set. So let's get started. So first things first is I'm going to take our memory wire and I'm going to cut these. Um, I'm just going to take a little chunk out. So I'm going to want these kind of on the smaller side. So I am going to go directly across from that cut in the best I can. And I'm just going to come in with those shears and snip. And now to make sure my earrings are going to be the same amount of wire, I just tend to match them up edge to edge. And then I'll take my shears right in here. Make sure I'm lined up and snip. So now I should have equal pieces here. Okay, now that those are cut, we're gonna go ahead and move the rest of this wire out of the way since we're not gonna need it. All right, so I'm just gonna hold this just like this, flip it up. We're gonna come in with those pliers and I'm gonna put that wire at the base, holding the wire on the opposite side that I am gonna be um, moving my pliers. So I'm going to be going away from me. So I'm holding the, holding the wire right here. I'm rotating it. It just kind of helps me get that leverage and that pressure that I need to move this um, extra heavy memory wire. Okay, so we got that all done. And now we're going to do that in that doesn't have the loop. We're just going to go ahead and push it right through the hole that we just created, the loop we just created, and we are going to fold that wire on top of itself. So again, I try to have that finger behind um, my pliers, just kind of helping that wire have the right leverage and I can get the right pressure that I need to get this into a nice loop. And we have our first frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that. So I take one of the sides. Again, I'm gonna loop this away from me to the side. And again, I have my finger on that opposite side, helping get that pressure and leverage I need. And then I'm just gonna take that end, push it right on through. And then I bring this one towards me. And again, I'm using that smaller side of the pliers. I'm just gonna fold that wire right on top of itself. Sometimes it takes a little bit of muscle, but look, we have cute little frames for our earrings. Okay, now that we have our forms, we're gonna go ahead and come in with our wires. So I have a rose gold wire here about 20 gauge. Let's go ahead and cut off about six inches. I'm gonna make sure I snip my wire with that flush side. And then I always like to, and it's not necessary, it just kind of keeps me in a good habit. I like to go over to my other edge 
and just trim it off with that flush side, making sure that both my um, wires are gonna be as um, smooth as they can. Now I wanna make sure anytime I'm working with wire that my wire is straightened first. So I have my three nylon pliers since I have a longer wire, um, but you could use your nylon pliers as well just to straighten um, this wire. It just kind of comes down to preference. I love the way these work for any piece that's at least six inches. Okay, so now my wire is all straight. Um, that way I'm gonna have less points that I create that are stressing my wire. And we're gonna attach this to the frame here. So I want about two inches and I'm just gonna fold it right on top of itself around that memory wire. And I'm just gonna loop it. And then I'm gonna bring this one down and loop it once more. I like to come in with my tweet or my uh, pliers, whether it's chain nose or a bent nose, and I just like to give it make sure all my wires are nicely tight together. Um, also, I check my backside, make sure they're nice and tight. I like the way that the three looks, but I think I'm going to try to do five this time. So there's four, and then there's five, and then I'm just going to trim off that extra wire. Again, I'm coming in with my flush cutters and I'm doing that flush side to make sure my wire won't be um, sharp and poking anything. And I wanna make sure I fold it down so it's not pointing up. So that end we just cut, we fold it down so it's not sticking up and won't get snagged on anything. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and string our amethyst pieces right onto um, this wire. And I think I'm gonna need probably about five of these. Again, it's gonna depend on the size of the rock I use. Um, also, it's gonna depend on how big you make your frames, because you could make these teardrop shapes um, much larger or smaller just kind of comes down to your preference so that's five let's see and five fit just about right i'm okay with a little bit of bedroom um i'd rather have a little bedroom than be too tight and then when i do this i'm gonna actually i want to loop my wire up the opposite way that's just something i prefer um, you can do them the same, both sides going down. I just really find it a tad more secure when I have it going up and this side going down. But again, that's just a preference. And I'm just going to fold the wire. We're going to tuck it up through, work it through. If you're having a hard time with this, um, your pliers would be a great thing to help you, a great tool. And again, I'm just trying to get that as tight as I can. And we're gonna go around five times. I'm gonna use my pliers here because I can't quite get that pulled up where I need. I'm gonna tighten my lines up. And then I'm gonna come back through. This should be for three of them. Again, I'm using that plier to just kind of help get my um, spirals around my memory wire frame much tighter than I am able to with my hand. And I wanna make sure I'm squeezing these nice and tight together. And I believe I just need to go once more just actually, I just have to finish this circle. Okay. 
Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm actually going to go ahead and snip this off because I don't need it to loop back around. And again, I'm coming in with that flush side. And then what I'll do is just kind of fold that end right on over, making sure it's not sticking up and it won't catch on anything. And now I have one of my amethyst pieces going right across. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and attach my fish hook ear wire. Um, I'm gonna be using the 18 karat gold. My ears are a little sensitive and they don't tend to be very sensitive when I'm using um, these. So I'm gonna slip them on. You don't have to attach the gold um, ear wires. Again, I just, my ears are sensitive. So we have the 18 karat and the stainless steel ones. And I just, I just feel the gold looks a tad better with these than a silver one. Now let's go ahead and finish off our other earring. So again, we're gonna come in with about six inches of wire. We're gonna go ahead and straighten that. And then we're gonna attach it first. Um, I find it easier to kind of bend the two inch hangover that you have and then take our long strand and wrap it all the way around when you are starting your first loop. Um, that's definitely gonna get it the tightest. And then we can finish off the rest of them just with our little two inch end here. And again, we're doing five loops. We're gonna squeeze these together. So I kind of misestimated my um, how long of strand, how long of extra uh, wire I need. So I'm gonna come in with my pliers just to finish wrapping. Okay, so then I wanna come in with those flush cutters. Again, flush end, and then I'm just gonna fold over the end that I cut. And then I'm gonna come in with um, those amethyst pieces again. Again, roughly, I need about five of them. It's gonna all come down to my size I have. I'm kinda of trying to choose some smaller pieces here that aren't quite as thick. Okay. I got three on there, four, and one more. Let's go with this guy. Let's see how that, that works perfectly. So again, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna wrap our wire around and again, I'm going the opposite way of my wire over here. So I'm gonna go up near where our, our ear wire will connect. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and loop this around and we're gonna try to do this five times. And again, I like to use my pliers if I have any difficulties getting that wire wrapped nice and tightly around our frame. And once more, and then we'll cut this off at our ear wire and we will be done with our earrings. And then we're gonna just move on to the simple um, matching necklace set. Again, we want to make sure you squeeze all your little wires nice and tight. All tight. And then we're going to go ahead and cut this wire. Flush side. And we're going to go ahead and bend that wire right down. 
So it's nice and tucked and won't be cutting or catching on anybody. And let's connect our ear wire. So again, I'm using those 18 karat gold ear wires. And our earrings are complete. How fun and simple is that, you guys? Okay, now we're gonna use that rose gold chain. Um, these do have some findings with it, which is really nice because we won't need a clasp and all the metal's gonna match. Okay, so something that I wanna point out that is really fun about the backside of the, the chain packaging is it does give you a chain size chart. So if you're wanting um, your necklace to hang at a certain length. It's going to give you how many inches um, and you can measure that out and cut it to the length that you want. I'm going to probably roughly do a princess. So I'm roughly going to do probably about 20 inches to 18 inches. Um, these are connected with a jump ring. So all I have to do is find that jump ring and take it off. And then on my mat, I have a little ruler. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out 20 inches. And then I wanna just find one of the um, chain links. I come in and I'm just gonna Take my flush cutter and cut it away. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go ahead and add our closures. So I'm gonna need two jump rings and a lobster claw. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that jump ring, attach it to my lobster claw, and then Put it right through the chain. And then we're just gonna go ahead and attach the jump ring right to the other side. And close it on up. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna latch it and close it. And then I'm going to go to the center point on the opposite side and I'm going to cut the chain there. So that looks like it's about here. So I'm going to take my flush cutters and just cut that away because we're going to connect a bar. So again, I'm gonna come in with that 20 gauge of rose gold wire. I'm roughly gonna cut about four inches off here. Now, if I wanted a thicker gauge wire, I can easily use a thicker gauge wire here, but I am already using the 20 gauge for the earrings. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the 20 gauge here. I'm gonna come in with my handy dandy one step looper. We are going to Put that wire right through, the, I call these the little claws, and the little peg. And then the wire should come out the back side. There's a little hole there. And then all you have to do is squeeze. And we created a loop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and already connect this to one side of the chain and then close it on up. So the one side is already connected to our chain. We don't even have to worry about it. And I'm gonna add amethyst pieces across. In this, I could do as many or little as I want, just as long as I have um, enough as long as I have enough wire to make a loop through my one step looper. So I'm thinking I'm going to put about 10 pieces on here. So 
So we're at six. We'll see what uh, 10 looks like. Because I'm not wanting this to be really big. I just want it to be a nice little subtle piece that matches my earrings. Um, but I'm thinking it'd be nice to do 10 because we put five and five in the earrings. And one more. I think that's a good length. And then we're gonna come back in with that one step looper. What I like to do is make sure my loops are going opposite directions. So this one got looped down. So I wanna make sure that it gets looped up. So again, I'm gonna put that wire right through my one step looper and I bring it down to the bead and we're just gonna squeeze our little tool here, the one step looper. And then now I wanna open this up because I want to connect the other end of our chain. And our chain is done. Look how fun that is. Now I have a matching necklace and a fun pair of earrings. Um, super easy to make. You don't even have to use a chip um, gemstones. You could use just normal gemstones. I just like how organic the um, chips look. And again, I just wanted to remind you guys, if you are messing with memory wire, um, it is so important that you're not using your normal plier or cutters. Make sure you're using the memory wire shears. Um, I did use those to cut my wire and then everything else I was able to use my normal tools with. But it's, I really just don't want any of you guys to be destroying any of your um, nice cutters because I would, I would personally cry about it, so I wouldn't want that to happen for you guys. All right, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you love this set that we made and happy crafting. <music>